blade of Mikola, and I have known defeat. Hello, my fellow Tarnished. This weapon is ridiculous, as is its little brother. There is no doubt in my mind that Eocade's Dancing Blade is the single strongest weapon skill in the entire game. The ease at which you can effortlessly kill bosses in a single use, or if they have the health to take it, punch 15k plus holes in them, is absolutely disgusting. And this weapon just got buffed in the latest patch. Yeah. Let me teach you how to be a monster with, well, this monster. But first, as I said, patch. Not, not that, not that one. Yes, indeed, one of the many changes was to, uh, well, this Ash of War. Before, when you used this otherwise just fairly okay average greatsword with its decent greatsword moveset to send the blade spinning out in front of you, twirling, damaging, and then returning for a slash, two things. The range that it reached was fairly low, even if you charged it to make it go a bit further, and you had to commit to that final slash on blade return, which means that if you missed, well, you were stood there like Galem waiting to be slapped as you flail at the air in this forced follow-up. Whereas now, after the blade has finished spinning, you can cancel your efforts and roll out of it. Which means if a boss dodges, if a play of dodges, you can just, well, back out of the commitment of this Ash of War. And what this has done has turned it from this thing completely disintegrates enemies, but it's a bit clunky and can get you caught out and it's a little bit awkward to use, to this thing disintegrates enemies and has no drawbacks anymore. And it's just beautiful, powerful, and incredibly fun. So what is actually happening here? Well, the key is that each bit of damage the spinning blade does actually activates the various effects in the game that increase your damage when you do multiple hits in a row. And obviously this is a lot of hits in a row, well, very, very quickly. Also, the blade is both physical and magic damage, and the Ashes of War, the dancing blade, gets buffed in damage the more magic and physical damage the blade has. Which means you can buff the physical damage, but also separately do all of the magic damage buffs are in the game for absolutely, and I don't say this lightly, LUDICROUS damage. Let me show you what's happening then. A good AR for a greatsword is about the 850 and above uh, ratio. This has about 780 at resting, so a little bit subpar there. However, when we apply each and every buff that we will be adding to this build today, well, we end up sitting at a nice, solid, and very, very respectable 1234. That is wonderful. That is a normal, good, heavy weapon with, like, Flame Grant Me Strength and Golden Vow and a few talismans and, you know, your meaty hitting. But... We use the Dancing Blade on this unsuspecting Omen fellow. Hello! And afterwards, as you can see, we alight with red glowy power. Look what happens. Not only do we shoot up to a ridiculous 1857, it doesn't stop there. The prophecy is true. It then goes up to 2,403 AR. That is absolute insanity, and that is the oomph with which the follow-up attack of the whole Ashes hits. In a lot of these clips, I don't even get to hit the follow-up attack of the Ashes, because either A, the spinning blade part has knocked them to the ground, or B, the spinning blade part has just killed them anyway. But the actual swing when it does come out, I mean, it does the damage again. It's ridiculous that this works the way that it does. So how do we get it to work, well, the way that it does? Buff-wise, it's fairly simple. We're using Golden Vow to uh, give us an overall 15% damage buff, and we're using Terra Magica to buff the magic aspect by 35%. That's nice and simple. Instead of using Flame Grant Me Strength to give 20% physical damage, we're actually going to use the Blood Boil Aromatic for 50% 
physical damage bump, which is obviously quite nasty here. You get the blood boil aromatic recipe from the shaded castle itself. Now, you can take a detour here to the boss of the Shaded Castle from the nearest grace, and he is indeed who will drop this weapon, the Marius Executioner's Sword. It's legendary armament, and it's got a lot of attention, and I'm sure you already knew that, but just in case. However, if you take a little detour to the right of the library near the grace itself, you will head up onto the roof and claim the cookbook from a corpse that, let's be honest, doesn't need it anymore. This then will give you, as I say, plus 50% damage for around 30 seconds. That is pretty tasty. It is the talismans, though, that really set this engine alight. First and foremost, we have Shard of Alexander from the end of Alexander's questline. And indeed, this gives the whole Dancing Blade uh, shebang 15% extra damage. Nice. We also have ourselves the Icon of Godfrey. This increases the damage of charged skills, and you can indeed charge and will charge this weapon. That's uh, from this Ever Jail here in Altus Plateau, and that's really cool too, plus 30% from these two talismans. The other two, however, are where the magic happens, along with the wondrous physic we'll get to in a moment. Rotten Winged Talisman gives you upwards of plus 30% damage if you hit enough times fast enough, which you certainly do. Millicent's Prosthetic is a similar effect, but more in the region of 20% damage, but some extra dex, which is nice because it lets you not really commit too hard to dex to meet the requirements of this weapon. These together then, along with the other talismans, nearly give you double damage mode for a few seconds. You get both Millicent's Prosthetic and Rotten Winged at the end of Millicent's questline. If you choose to help her, you will get the Rotten Winged. If you choose to go against her, you will get Millicent's Prosthetic. You can't get both at once anymore since a few patches ago, but if you get it dropped for you or a new game plus choosing the other path, you can end up with both talismans. That is fantastic, but it doesn't stop there. Our wondrous physic. We have the, you know, generic magic damage bumping tier. That's whatever. It's nice, an extra 20% on the magic side of things. But the other one is again the tier that makes you do more damage if you attack rapidly in quick succession, which, yes, stacks with the two talismans. This is from the Erd Tree in the Consecrated Snowfield. It's a little bit hidden away, and you might well have not found this boss, but it is very well worth going to get because this is a potent damage increase, which means we have three separate entities increasing increasing our output as a reward for rapid hits that all stack and that all stack in a big way. And as you've been seeing then, the result of this coming together is an absolute powerhouse of slaughter that just decimates everything. And as I said, because it's now been buffed and we don't have to hard commit if we miss, well it's just got so much more usable. So we have ourselves a situation where I genuinely think that this is the single easiest and highest damage relative to how easy it is to use Ash of War weapon skill in the game, but you now don't have any of the downsides that used to be present by locking you in into a really long animation if you missed. It's just perfect. The stat spread here is a fairly simple arcane strength, uh, well, mix, 55 strength, 50 arcane, hitting those soft caps. The rest is just as you might imagine, 25 faith for the requirement for the buffs, 20 intellect for the requirement for Terra Magica. By the way, Terra Magica isn't really required, I'm just trying to pump it as much as possible for, well, the sheer amusement of it. It's awkward, it's a zone on the ground, it's the most clunky part of this build. You're totally fine to just ignore that completely. It really isn't the end of the world to lose it, but I did think it was amusing that such a potent magic buff did actually work here. In any case then, yeah, there's not much else for me to tell you. It quite literally is assemble the pieces of this Exodia and watch every boss look at you and yell, that's impossible. And you just get the sheer satisfaction of it all. I hope you enjoyed this then. Please subscribe, hit the bell for more so you don't miss further builds, tips, tricks, guides, funny bits, all of that good stuff. Hit the like if you did indeed have a good time and consider supporting the future of this channel on Patreon down below. It is what keeps us going and it's seriously appreciated. A good boy. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos. Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes. Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement to take our insanity and turn it into an 
entertainment. Yes, I said entertainment twice. To reiterate that it is nice. To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis when you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage. Is, uh, goodbye.